Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Karina, for uh, gate crashing into this meetup at the last minute. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Deepak. He's uh, Chief Cloud Architect with CloudWave, um, and uh, I'm the president of the company. Um, so we will just go through a very simple tool, provisioning tool. Promise you it won't be as complex as the Istio stuff. So. Uh, so what, what we did was, uh, I'll just go through briefly about our company, it'll take you 10 seconds, and then talk a bit about the provisioning tool. Um, so we are a small business uh, out of Tyson's, uh, primarily focused on the cloud platforms, um, both on the services side and also on the tools development. Um, so we constantly uh, develop tools where all these different cloud platforms um, I won't say lack, uh, it would improve the efficiency of any of these platforms. Examples, Healthforce, Azure, uh, MuleSoft. So we constantly develop tools and also uh, provide services for a lot of the federal agencies and the commercial customers. Uh, out of that initiative is what came out, this Azure provisioning tool. Um, I'll give you a very high over overview and then I'll give it over to uh, Deepak. So, uh, one of the uh, Cuts product um, companies uh, actually provision their product in Azure where they let their end users actually um, provision their product on, on, on AWS. Uh, they did not have anything that they could do that on Azure. Uh, that kind of triggered us to say, okay, why don't we build a cool tool for you guys so that with a button click, you can have your Cuts product provision in Azure so that you don't have to go into the complexities of creating the VMs and stuff like that. So, so that kind of what, what came about the idea of creating this provisioning tool. Uh, so this is uh, what Deepak is gonna demo you is, is a tool in progress, but it definitely all the backend stuff, everything is working. Uh, we just have to make it web enabled. The work is in progress right now. Uh, and also this tool can um, allow any organization if they want to have their applications, uh, let's say it's on-prem on multiple servers, if you want to make that Azure enabled, uh, this can basically uh, have have a very simple configuration which we do on the back end and allow this, these applications to be provisioned very quickly on Azure uh, and then it just gives you a URL and boom, the application is, is on the Azure platform. Uh, so I'll let Deepak kind of walk through. Uh, is, is that okay? Okay. So this is kind of what the tool looks like. Um, so right now it's a client-based. Uh, we are making it as a web-based as, as we're talking here. Uh, so you can see here uh, the, the basic information is being provided by, by, by the user if they want a Cots product to be uh, installed on Azure. So you give the basic subscription ID, tenant ID, and stuff like this. And you can see here that the addition, you can specify if it's a team addition or an enterprise addition or, or a department or an enterprise, depending on how you want your users to have this COTS product run. So it should, should be running on the dev environment. So we can put that COTS product on the dev environment and we pre-configure what each of this environment needs to be. Uh, so that way, uh, all they need to do is they can go into the web interface and then they say, okay, I need uh, a simple single developer uh, addition of your COTS product. So they just pick that and just provision it, and then their product will start running on the Azure environment. Um, so, so I think we can jump on to the demo. So we'll show you very quickly on the demo uh, how, how, so this is, <clears throat> this is the environment right now where we kind of predefined all these parameters. So you can see a log message coming in, which basically tells you that we have started provisioning a, a a simple application or a COTS application onto the Azure environment. So all these additions that you see, uh, which is the dropdown, Deepak, can you show me the dropdown? Yeah, so those are all dynamically pulled from the Azure. So what are the different uh, VMs that you have? So as Microsoft includes this, it'll automatically be uh, created here in the dropdown so that people can pick what, what VMs they need to use. So you can see here the log messages coming on the right side, which effectively, uh, so now what we're doing is, is going through creating all the different components of Azure in the back end. So we pretty much use the uh, Fluent APIs. So that's kind of what the programming technology we used uh, to kind of build all these things. So this is effectively for you don't need an Azure admin, nobody. So you, you just can provision your application or your COTS product with just a simple click and it just goes ahead and creates and Deepak will show you on the Azure side 
how different all these components gets created. So yeah, so right now it's creating the storage account. So we will go through different components that goes through. So if you go back to Azure, so you will see So basically what it's doing now is as we look at the front end, right? So it's basically creating these components on Azure. So at the end of it, we create basically it's a simple application which creates a resource group. And then at the end of this demo, what's going to happen is a, a URL is going to pop up uh, on the demo. And then the customer can go to that URL and then basically browse through the COTS application. So this is kind of what, what it's doing right now. It's going to take a couple more minutes to finish creating that whole thing because we started, yeah. How do we define the actual cost application configuration? Do we have JSON file for example? Yeah, so we, we have the config. No. Um, basically on this one, uh, on this particular customer that we had, it's an image of the COTS product. And then when you copy the image on the Azure, and then they activate the image on the front end. So basically, if it's a three-tier, this cost product has a three-tier architecture, two-tier architecture, and a four-tier architecture. So based on the addition that they choose, we create two, three, four machines, and all, every, everything related to that particular cost product. It's not a tool that's generalized to put in every single cost product in the market. This code has to be updated or modified based on um, a particular specific cost vendor. So for example, we can go. Ahead. We can go into. The if, if I want to deploy a Mongo stack with, I don't know, database uh, cluster, and then my load balancer, three application servers, how do I describe that to the system for the system to be able to do that? Yeah, th that's that's the requirement gathering part of it. Just like we would create a script resource ARM script, we would have to get that uh, for that. For that particular use case that you're talking about, we have to get the requirement from you and update the product to suit your requirements. So I will not be able to do it myself. I will no, you. Yes. You the the, the idea is. You need to tell you what your stack is for different environments, and then right. we can we can configure it and give it to you. Basically, it started off with this Scott's vendor. He had like 400 or 500 customers, and each one of them went ahead and built their own architecture. No policies. Um, there's no standardization. So at, with this, they were at least able to standardize and have a, um, something common between all the installations. Yeah. So how is this significantly different than the runbook technology that Microsoft Azure already has? Um, it's, it's not very different from the runbook, but um, the runbook. Uh, Well, uh, run, Runbook, um, mm, not exactly sh um, sure how to answer this, but uh, this is a front. We're, the idea is to bring a, build a web front end to this so the users can log in, enter their subscription ID and um, a password, and then go install it on themselves, by themselves. With the Runbook, you still, it's not, I guess it's not really as intuitive as this tool would be, because this tool is built for those customers specifically looking for that COTS product. With a runbook, you still need some extra Azure knowledge, I guess, for an admin, sort of. So. Right, but this one requires your experience. Um, well, no, I think it's, it's, yeah, it's just a pre-configuration, right? So when, when you say product XYZ comes in, then all we do is we just set up your configuration file, and then the use, your end users can run your product right, on, on Azure. Products. Right. It's not uh, one, one solution designed to fit everybody. No, that's not the aim of this. It's specifically designed for only for this uh, cost product vendor. So. Um, Do you have any other slides? Launch this, uh, OK. OK. I'm just going to say no, but what actually it's going to do is launch the web portal. 
for that cards product and the user is up and running with that cards product. Yeah, we just we, this is about the dashboard, cloud in dashboard. It's, there's nothing specific here, so we just have some slides on that. So, in, any other questions? No. Nope. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.